my bad. Yeah, right now we're just doing preliminary while we're waiting on um the other guy. That's that's not part of the panel because. But I mean, I I don't know. I didn't. It is want... interesting though. It yeah. is really interesting. Like it's just like what the freak? I didn't know that those things. Did I only figured that out because I was doing research for this topic? Um, you know, I didn't. This speech was twenty years ago now, and I I vague like I remember it when it happened, but I didn't pay much attention to it. And now going back over it and everything that's happened with Cosby since, um, it hasn't. It doesn't like judge. It does. It's not going to affect the way I, I like. I like analyze the speech, but it definitely like. Like when I was telling my girlfriend about it, she like wanted to dismiss it entirely. She was like, "But he's out here raping women and da, 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 da. So he wants to moralize against everybody else, but he's doing this, 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 this and this." And uh, and I'm like, I, I see, like I see what you're saying, but that's not. I'm not going to head that direction uh with, with this discussion because i think what you're trying to get at with this is a lot deeper than cosby himself absolutely yeah i agree 100 percent. i appreciate that listen um it's 5 37 now and i do have to like a, a hard out at like seven so i i feel like we kind of need to get started and when the fifth person joins and we'll just join um so listen uh thank you guys all for being here and thank you to all of the viewers and everyone who are here for this discussion um this is the nigga panel i tried to put that in the title but twitch doesn't allow you to do so i tried to put negro with an i in the in the title twitch doesn't allow you to do that either um i tried to put negro with an e twitch actually won't let me put the word negro in my title the freak um, what kind of censorship is this? Um, so then I just put the end panel, but y'all know what it is. It's the nigga panel. Could be called the Natic panel, but no, it's the nigga panel. Um, it's not Ninja. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you guys for being here. We're going to be having a discussion. And I think the beauty about these discussions and so far on the nigga panels thus, thus far is that we, we haven't gotten incredibly heated because we do have I, what I believe is a sense of respect for one another. And we're having uh, decent conversations that don't need to be moderated. Everyone can jump in as they see fit. I'm encouraging everyone to do so. I hope to God that you have some talking points that you would like to discuss. And I'm hoping that we all create the room and space to allow each other to communicate very openly and very cleanly and very civilly. Um, so I will not be moderating this um, unless I absolutely have to, but I don't believe that that will happen. Um, and we're going to be discussing Bill Cosby's pound cake speech. Um, Bill Cosby gave his pound cake speech um, in 2004, I believe it was, on the 50th year of Brown versus Board of Education. Um, and in that, it was at the NAACP um, Awards, and it was like the 50 year anniversary. And I think that it makes a lot of like the things that he said were, I think, really challenging. Um, and it, we got he got a lot of ire from the black community because it felt like he was railing against the black community. Um, I believe Michael Eric Dyson made a statement that like Bill Cosby pretty much had ignored the black community or black issues in all of his TV shows and so on and so forth. While um, when he finally got to the NAACP thing, then he like started railing against poor black people. I don't believe that's to be true, but we'll get into all of that. So here comes the pound cake speech discussion. We're not going to go in a circle and like everyone give their points. Anyone that has anything that they would like to say, uh, go ahead and take it away. I, I do want to. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no. Whoever I'll start. If, if if you want to start, you can go ahead. But I was just waiting for somebody else to go ahead and start. Yeah, no. I I do want to. I think you started a good jump off point. Um, with talking about the morality of his argument, right? Um, or of his speech. Um, I think I I agree with you that it it's not um, it's not about. I, I kind of want to separate the uh, rapes and and even the drugs that he did like at this time um, or before before this time, rather, this was 2004, um, like in his younger days um, from this. And I think it's more about to me, I feel like it is a bit of a class issue. Um, sorry, fanatic. And also. Um, who he associated himself with at the start of his career to get where he was in 2004. Because this is still like, I, I would consider this still like height of Cosby. Like he was still pretty popular in 2004. 
Um, cause like, wasn't the fat Albert movies coming out around this time or something like that. But anyway, he was still very popular. And, um, I think because he was brought up in a, um, affluent white, uh, Hollywood and saw other people like Harry Belafonte and Sidney Poitier around him, he thought, at this time that that was still possible for other black people to do the same way he did. And I feel like it, the speech is more about like appeasing to this version of blackness that he, he himself has right. Um, and had gotten to the height of fame that he was at be because of it, I would say. Um, but that, he demonizes other people for not having that same type of, of, of blackness. That's hmm. what I think the morality is. Hmm. So, you know, with his speech, it, 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 there was a lot of things that he, that was a lot in there. There was a lot to unpack. There's a lot to unpack in there. And I believe that what he did with that speech was he took uh, the underclass of the black community and he kind of uh, demonized them as if that was the only part like he, he rightly pointed out culture as a problem but he acted as if it was the only problem as and as if uh, racial um, equality had was has already been uh, found and, and it's just only black people holding black people back um, there's a lot that I want to get into regarding that because, like I said, there is some truth to what he's saying, um, to, to some of the things that he did say, but there was a lot of misinformation in there. There was a lot of um, moralizing uh, that just at this stage is very uh, hypocritical, which doesn't take away from his arguments, but it's just very rich coming from him knowing what he had already done leading up to that speech. Um, but like, but, you know, back to the point, this isn't like really about like him and what he did. Um, the points he was making about the black community, I feel like, yeah, well, even like he admitted it in his deposition. So it's not, no, I mean, you could say allegedly. Fine. We can move past that. It's okay. He didn't admit to drugging or raping women. Of those okay. Things. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> um. I disagree with you, but we, we, I will, I will respectfully move on from that. Um, allegedly, we'll, we will throw that in there. Allegedly, um, you know. So he, like I said, he had a lot of points in there, and I want to get to kind of, I want to get to a lot of the points and like um, going, like really, really digging deep into what he's talking about or what he's trying to get at. Um, overall, I feel like if you uh, reading that, like when you sent it to me, reading that and not listening to it, but reading it, um, if I didn't know Bill Cosby had written it and he wasn't using words like us and our people, I would think it was like, it, this could have been written by uh, uh, a segregationist, uh, you know, who a, seg a segregationist sympathizer um, or, or or somebody like that's on the, uh, the uh, 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 racist white conservative, let's just put it like that, um, with some of the things he was saying, um, especially the mistruths. So I, I'll leave it at that for now, but those are uh, some of the points I do want to get to. Hmm. I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I guess um, for me, I, I look at it and it's so crazy because these are a lot of the thoughts that I've had. I think being raised in a very socially conservative home, um, I think it really did, uh, I guess, kind of impact my perspective to very similar to his. And I see a lot of the things that Bill Cosby was talking about embodied in my mother and the idea about the things that weren't being done, my mother was actually doing. Looked at different trajectory slated for being raised in abject poverty and the different the the the, the, the difference in our outcome. Um it's really crazy to me. And it seems like everything he was talking about, I could see it in the neighbors around me. I could see them living that way. And I always saw them as different and always saw us as something different. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, we can get into any sort of specifics. 
Yeah. You have um, any any specific so, parts? Anyone that that they want to want to discuss first? Sure. Um. So let's first discuss what really caught my ear is when uh, I mean we can just we, we can quote him at this point because um, we have the speech right here. Uh, he says um, the black high school dropout rate in two thousand four. Uh, no, excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, no, he the the this whole the stat of the fifty percent dropout rate. Mm-hmm. Yes, but I'm trying to find his exact quote uh, in it. But uh, I, I'm sorry, I can't right now. But he did drop a a, a stat about uh, there being a fifty percent dropout rate. Um, not only is that, yeah, not only is that exaggerated. That is grossly exaggerated, and not even close to being true then and it's even less true now um and that that was towards the top of the uh beach so that 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 is the first thing that caught my eye um and we could talk about that because from everything i looked at it uh it's saying that right now when he made the speech it was at like around 12 or 13 percent if i'm remembering the stats correctly because I looked this all up like when I first read it about a few hours ago. Um, yeah, it was like a 11 ish. It was either 12, 11 or 13, 12 or 13 percent, something like that. But now it's like all the way down to 8 percent. So it just. The speed overall, like that first caught my ear. And so they like kind of made me skeptical of the rest of the speech. Where is this headed? Like what 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 is he about to start to get into? And can I trust what he's what he's about to to say to me um so i'm but, looking yeah. and it seems like black people had a, a completion rate of about 40 percent for college and this was at the naacp um do you think he was only talking about high school or do you think he was just talking about school and you know he does say at the top and correct me if i'm wrong philly if this is a quote you're you're referring to at the top in our cities and public schools we have a 50% dropout rate. And I thought the same thing, Fanatic, like, well, first of all, uh, is it college or is it high school? Like, who, who are we accounting for? And so I went to the National Center of Education Statistics because I just wanted to know, like, for my awareness. And it 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 was, um, I, I feel like I interpreted it as talking about schools because the context of the conversation is he's talking about essentially how to raise children so that they become productive adults in society. And so I, I interpreted it as high school, not college. That's totally fair. Appreciate that. Good job doing your research. I love everybody in this freaking panel. Y'all have no idea. Um, sure. Okay. So I, I, obviously, I think the, the dropout rate was, is there's just no matter, no other way around it. It's just factually inaccurate. I don't think the dropout rate has ever been 50% in, at the high school level for black people, for any people. For anyone, any yeah. People. That's just, that's absurd. Um, so he got that stat wrong. Um, although we do have, a, you know, a pretty high dropout rate, higher than everyone else. Um, we do. It's so, so like, that's what I meant. Like, there is a lot of truth. There is some truth to what he's saying. It's just uh, grossly exaggerated some of the points he's making. Uh, if, and like, I got a few of these. Um, so we, you know, as soon as like, we feel like we're done, we get, I, I, we're done. We're, I, we're a, in the conversation now. In that speech. We're, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. What you want. So an- another thing he, he was talking about was, um, uh, he said uh, the doors were were opened by the board, the Brown versus the Board of Ed- Education, and there was a few other things he mentioned in that speech. Um, like I said, that made it seem like um, we've reached some sort of um, racial racial equality that um, it, it just is not factual. And um, and so first of all, um, I pulled up this BuzzFeed news article um, that that kind of like debunk some of the things he was saying. And in this article, um, they said that uh, desegregation uh, orders ensured 90% of Black children were attend- attending desegregate- desegregated schools by the 1970s, but white flight and legal opposition quickly reversed those gains. By 2004, the time he made the speech, about 3 million Black children were attending hyper-segregated schools in which 90% or more were 
students were minor minorities. Uh, three years later in 2007, the Supreme Court ruling sharply curtailed the ability of, of schools to consider race when trying to diversify public schools, um, which so, like, I guess basically to sum that up, um, while the Board of Brown versus the Board of Education did make some gains, they were quickly like backtracked by uh, social attitudes, um, uh, just self segregation, um, and you know the, the making of private private schools, the loophole where parents could get around that by sending their kids to all white private schools, um, which uh, you know naturally segregated a lot of these places anyway. Um, so it's it just seemed like he 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 made a couple of these points of of racial progress, uh, and that like the country was headed in a certain direction where it it just it didn't ring true to me. I also didn't care for the fact that he said they opened doors for us, which coming from here I was like, oh, oh, really? Like they, yeah. like white people, did that for us. We we have to. We have to be in ingratiated by by that that they did that for us. Okay, like uh, and, and it's weird because <laughs> so he, weird he, in in the top balcony were all the civil rights activists and the so people that crazy. he kind of seemed like. Yeah, it was just it, it was that was a weird statement. Like Wait given the context, I think. Well, let, let's about? let's let's talk about that then. If we want to use, because I wouldn't, I would never want to fixate on just the phrase "they," but since it's been brought up, I guess we have to address it. I think when you start talking about they opened up the door for us, right? Because, yes, we obviously marched for it. We fought for this. Um, but they were the gatekeepers. They were the ones that were, like, doing the segregation and the nonsense and, like, whatever. And it literally took them sending the National Guard. When I say them, they sent the National Guard into these schools in order to, man in order to mandate that the laws be upheld, which allowed these kids to go to these um, these uh, schools, which are now supposed to be integrated. So in that case, they did open up the door. They being the Supreme Court, which was all white folks at that time, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, more like the door was uh, kind of being like banged on and uh, kicked at for the for fifty years preceding that the hinges broke off and sure. okay, I guess then then they opened the doors, but it wasn't like they willingly opened the doors and said, Hey, come on in guys. I mean that, oh, that I, was the I insinuation that. he was he was making. I don't believe that that was insinuated in anything. It was a very simple statement, which I can read right now for us if we need to. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. these people said they opened the doors. They gave us the right and today, ladies and gentlemen, in our cities and public schools we have fifty percent dropout. In our own neighborhood we have men in print. So th there was no historic yeah. he didn't give any greater historic context he didn't try to downplay they gave us our rights it, i mean they gave us our right they, they gave us the no, they, they gave, gave us, us our right no, no. they now gave we're us fucking the right up, they gave us the right and the right was the right to go into integrated schools school. because it had right. been previously no, no, I, I know, illegal I know the context. Uh, so is this factually mm -hmm. accurate um well okay <laughs> No, it's not because, like I said, everything that happened after that was was it, it's been the opposite of them opening the doors and them giving us the. I mean, it, technically they did, but then it was like everything was kind of like eventually reversed. Yeah, self. Yeah, eventually reversed. Anyway, and also he like that. That is the opening to him scolding, basically. Uh, lower class black people um in that whole speech so it just seemed like he the insinuation was that like they look they gave us our rights and now we're fu we're fucking it all up like I, I, so it was, also just seems, not, it just seems weird it's it's very odd because it is a speech for the NAACP like it's well, just I think the people like clapping and cheering him, like clapping, like kind of like stirred him all up a little bit because mm -hmm. from my understanding, this was very, um, this was all impro improvised. This wasn't like his, his written speech. Like he had certain notes he, or points he wanted to make, but the clapping and everything got him like all riled up and he just started going. He it just was went a, off. It was a speech. I think he had most of this prepared because this wasn't like something that was, that he wasn't, hadn't spoken out before. Like there's other interviews with him yeah. saying really close to the same thing. I don't think that, <laughs> I don't, I really don't think it's realistic to say that um, he, that 
<laughs> this is all extemporaneous and un, and spurred on by the crowd because again this is in line with what his vantage well, point was as was like like literally shared by so many other interviews that he's done so many other speeches that he's done TV like the other one that I mean, right like this is not this is in not the 70s too yeah <laughs> yeah I, I, the, I, the idea that this is like the crowd did that to him no and i think honestly i think it's actually really befitting if we're talking about the national advancement for, uh, the association for the advancement of colored people I mean, really, like, are, so here's what I was hoping. I was hoping that we would get into really substantive conversations about the points that he's making. If we want, we can get really bogged down in the heels about like what it means about like when he says they open the doors and like, like, and, and picking apart each individual sentence. But there was obviously a general tenor and a general perspective that he communicated like pretty lengthily. And I feel like there's a lot of stuff to discuss in those things about the merits of the, th the things that he's talking about, as opposed to trying to fixate on individual words so that he's wrong. Well, there's nothing yeah. new to what. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, if <clears throat> so, my interpretation is that there is a huge difference between conversations you should have in public in intercommunal spaces of care. So, in interpersonal spaces of care, we would say things like, "Oh." If you want this job, you got to get the gold out your teeth. You got to pull your pants up. You got to stop sagging. You have to talk proper, talk white. These are things we should hold. These are conversations we should hold in interpersonal spaces of care. When we hold these out in public, these can have some negative backlashes, like white people seeing this speech and like trying to reaffirm their beliefs on black people, where it's like, oh, I knew there were thugs. Oh, I knew that there were this, 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 and stereotypes. These are like the harms. Because like you would never go through black groups and say like, these people are thugs. You might go to an individual and say, hey, you're acting like a thug right now. You're acting like a savage. Pull your pants up. Take that, take that gold out your teeth. And you got to act proper. You got to play the game if you want to win. But you would never say that to a group of care. I think these are conversations we should have interpersonally. Um, and not like super duper public. There is a second level of this, which is like, it's not the most public speech. It's for in a like NAACP. So like, this is already a targeted audience, which makes it like semi acceptable. I keep going back and forth on like, whether it's like acceptable, not acceptable, but the broad tenet of the speech is about like how parents aren't really in the households or whatever. And these are aspects that I agree with. Um, I just think, when it comes to some of the like more anecdotal lines, like when he's like with names like Shaniqua and Mohammed and all of the crap, why are we in jail? And I'm like, you know, you're not wrong. Okay. But that's, those are like interpersonal conversations, not like public. Yeah. I agree. Um, Taj, what do you got? What do you got? I'm not moderating. I'm just, you haven't spoken. I'm just trying to figure yeah, out. Yeah. I, I, I agree with cut sleeve. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. With what a lot of sense what Cutsley was saying, like it, it turns into this weird, weird realm of like tap dancing whenever two black people have conflict in predominantly white spaces. Um, it really does turn into that because like one person could be saying something that is like a valid thing to say, but it just gives life into a straw man that that people that don't have black people's best interests in mind can use to weaponize against us. So if you if you talk about the you know, like the thing, like you said, cut sleeve. Like that's a conversation, but like that can be had like within within um, the black community themselves. Like say a black church or a black community center. These conversations are had. I I've been to like town halls like this where it's like ninety five percent black people or all black people, and this conversations had. But when it's put on the View or on Fox News or OAN or Newsmax or something like that, or even Twitch then that's when things get weaponized against us. So I understand, like, why people would be hesitant to have those conversations um, in, like, really large spaces. What Cosby did, that's kind of the type of form of tab, dan tab dancing, in my opinion, where, where he says this, but, like, his audience is not us. His audience. I'm, it's the NAACP. It's, it's a, it's a shade. Aren't, they, aren't they primarily black, the NAACP? Yeah, yeah. But like it's who who took off and ran with that though. That's the thing, um, and, and may, maybe I shouldn't be criticizing him because you're right. It wasn't NAACP, but with with the speech, like this was brought up on. I'm looking up on on Wikipedia page for it right now, right? Like why is CBN talking about it? 
Like, why Why is... I'm assuming Fox News and Bill O'Reilly probably had their moment with it as well. Um, so, wait, wait, know, like, wait, wait, wait. Get, we can't yeah. criticize a public speech at the NAACP Awards because different news people took it up. That just sounds so unrealistic, right? Like, clearly, people can take up anything. If I'm... Literally, if I, I, I anything that I say publicly, they're going to try to do. Like, I, I, I don't think I'm going to criticize him for that. He is a public speaker with a public forum who's, like, literally been part of the center of, like, some of the positive trajectory of the black image. And so he's going to the NAACP awards and he's discussing things with primarily black people for a movement that's been really largely centered around the advancement of black people and talking about one of the biggest things that are impacting black people. I, what, what, what is happening? Very, very fair. That's fair. Yeah, I guess, because if I, if I were, I guess what you're saying is that, like, if I were to, like, condemn Cosby for his statements at the NAACP Awards, then where is a safe conversation right. in the world of cameras and social media and stuff? Yeah. That's the question. Okay. All, <laughs> so, right, all right, I've moved on this. I've moved on this. Like, the general idea of Tab Dance, say if he went on ABC and said this, or Fox sure. and said this, then yeah, that's... That, that yeah, I'd be angry. Answer. Okay, sure. 100%. But, like, when, inside of, like, spaces that should be safe, but then, like, are turned out to be not very safe, um, then, then like, the rules are different. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I, I would say, so, I mean... Mine I, I, changed. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm glad it didn't turn into some crazy debate. Um, I think the, 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 it seemed like the general, like, the things that he was talking about were significantly about parenting. Right, like that seemed like that 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 tended to be the the major talking point of his things, right? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Do you guys think that there are cultural issues within? The, okay, okay, I'll just say this really quickly. I think that there's always this thing where we ha we we have this mentality, and you you guys have seen me on my platforms. You've seen the type of debates I engage in. You know exactly what the freak my points are regarding systemic oppression, regarding, um, you know, just the various ways that uh, systemic racism is absolutely in impacting com communities of people. And I think that all of those statements are true. But while I hold all of those views and you guys have never heard me deviate from any of that, I still believe in reparations and all the economic things that need to happen in order to like offshore all these, I mean, offset all these damages that have been done. We still got to recognize, though, as individuals, we have personal responsibility. I will never look at an individual and then say, well, you know, this is what the system did to him. I will look at a community and I will say this is what the system did to them. But as an individual, we have to take personal responsibility for the way that we're uh, for, for our educational aspirations, for our familial aspirations, for our employment aspirations. And yes, I understand that we fight, face we face hurdles in every single one of those aspects but clearly clearly we can't keep waiting for white people to fix this problem that white people caused and are in denial of don't you guys think that's a fair statement that is a fair statement however when you're t like you said when you're talking to an individual this is uh, this is a uh, very 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 fair statement to make but when you're looking at the totality of uh, the state of Black America, as Cosby was attempting to do in that speech, um, you can't make statements uh, like uh, these parents are, are buying fi $500 sneakers uh, for what? And they don't want to spend $200 on hooked on phonics. Um, when when the data, when the data shows that um, it, it has more to do with economic circumstances uh, on what you're spending uh, your money on and there, there's no evidence to show that uh, blacks or Latinos uh, spend more on consumptions uh, than similar, similarly positioned, um, ep economically similarly positioned white people. Um, so it's like, if we're going to talk about these things, let's let's talk about like what really what really are the issues. Um, and yes, like individually, it is going to be a, a, a matter of your will to succeed in life and your personal choices and the people you surround yourself with. However, when the systems put in place, and I hate to be that guy, but like there really, there literally have been systems put in place to make sure that the vast majority of 
pe black people, which have always been on the, the lowest rung of the social uh, order in this country to keep us there. And we have to fight extra, extra hard. And when we have fought extra, extra hard, i.e. the 60s, Dr. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, um, Fred Hampton, um, Bobby Seale, uh, you can name plenty of, of, of black activists who were uh, kind of um, preaching these these things that we're talking about, but but reaching a very wide audience, they were killed. They were murdered by the FBI. They were systematically taken out. So uh, yes, there is a, 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 fit, a fracture. Uh, there is a, a lack of leadership going on that, that has been lacking for the last 40 years. Um, and we can get into other, like those are, those are uh, like, uh, t those, those are things that we can just uh, like, see with our eye, but like the, the, those aren't, we aren't running, we aren't, we're not even talking about policies put in place to keep uh, black people get up, ghettoized. Um, we're not even talking about white flight, uh, white people's insistence on, on, on moving away from black people when black people uh, achieve any sort of upward mobility and even start to move out of their own um, neighborhoods. Um, white people just, they, when the, the, there is a peer research study that showed that um, the majority of white people are not comfortable if their neighborhoods reach more than eight or 9% black people. And if it's above 21%, they're moving out. Okay, I so again, these are these are problems that I discuss on my platform on a regular basis. But none of those problems, none of those descriptions get in the way of the personal prescriptions for individuals to ensure that they like body the 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 values that would see them climbing the economic ladder, the best ladder in this country. Parents taking a more pivotal role in their children's education and things like that would still lead to better outcomes. And we're seeing that those kind of things aren't happening. While I understand that- well, my, uh, Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, my argument, my, my, my reasoning for, for bringing up those things is, is because I agree with everything you're saying. So there's nothing really to, to, argue with, to argue with there. But my main problem with the way that Cosby, like I said, the way he presented this speech is he leaves all of the stuff I'm talking about out and acts as, acts as if it's 100% the fault of parents and, and individuals, as if there's not these systems in place to um, kind of uh, incentivize or entice uh, Blacks to kind of be stagnant and remain complacent in the, think, in the position that society we're in. I think that's a very I mean, charitable interpretation. I think, and, and it's cool if you have it and you're entitled to it, I don't think that he was trying to imply in any capacity that the only thing facing us was these things or this was the totality of the reasons that we are in, this, in these positions. What I what do think he was doing is while recognizing that all of these other things exist, I do think he was also referring. I mean, he, what, what he was doing was focusing specifically, not totally and not saying that nothing else applies, but specifically in this speech, he was focusing on culture. Sometimes I might talk about culture as I've been primarily doing within this discussion here. That doesn't invalidate or change any of my positions regarding any of the systemic barriers that are facing black people today. I can talk about anything at any given time. Because I want spaghetti today does not mean that I don't want sp um, that I don't believe in vegetables. It's just what I want now. And you can talk about individual things at any given time. And right now, his focus was culture. I focus on culture sometimes. That's what he's doing here. And I do think that his cultural points are valid. Do you? Yes. And oh, so, okay, so let's focus on the merits of what he's talking about and not try to characterize it as if he's dismissing everything else that we all know exists, that we all talk about on a regular basis. Let's not let's not this or that. Well, this I'm conversation. trying to talk about the culture, but you, you keep like directing it or saying, no, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about what he said because I, I was trying to break his points down. You said you didn't want to talk about that. So now I'm trying to talk about something different. And you're saying, no, let's talk about what he was talking about. Wait, I don't what? think anyone else here interpreted it in that way. Please be charitable for the purpose of the conversation so that we can have a decent discussion for the love of God. I'm pretty sure Jacob's okay. not a... You want to talk about the things we agree on, I'm, right? No, that's not... Billy, please. I'm pretty sure Cutsleeve sitting here understands exactly what I was communicating, and I'm sure Jay does too, and I'm pretty sure if we ran it by John, he would too. Please just be decent for the purpose of the conversation. 
I, what I said specifically was I didn't want us to focus specifically on like trying to pick apart every individual word he was saying, but instead I'd rather f focus on the substance of the things that he was trying to communicate. Like for example, I don't want to get bogged down on when he said they open the door. I'd rather talk about, okay, so his idea is that the door is open and basically, but our culture is still failing in that way. I would want to talk about the substance of what he's talking about and not be very nitpicky about individual words or individual numbers that he's using. Like, that's what I was saying. It's hard to talk about the substance of what he's talking about if the substance is wrong. That That's my only point. But I, I'll go ahead and let other people hop in here and sign in. Wait, I think that's the, the, the huge thing. I think that's like kind of what Fnatic is getting at. If you think the substance is wrong, I think that's the discussion we should have. When he's saying substance, he's just talking about, again, the individual words, like, for example, the 50% statement or that they opened up the door when in reality black people fought for it and those sorts of things, as opposed to the actual merits of what the general tenor and what that he was trying to communicate. Um... Jay, so like there's a line in here that he says at one point, uh, um, he says, you know, I, I'm talking about these people who cry when their son is standing there in an orange suit. Where were you when he was two? Where were you when he was 12? Where were you when he was 18? And how come you don't know he had a pistol? And where's his father? And why don't you know where he is? And why doesn't that father show up to talk to this boy? When you hear that statement, what, 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 what? Can you do you feel like that's a challenging statement that you disagree with or what 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 are your thoughts there? Mm. Do I disagree with it? I I don't fully I don't fully agree with it. No. Um I think it's challenging because there is the uh expectation that and on a broader scale this is also a theme of his his speech that there's not a community like at all like there's no community whatsoever um which is funny because then it also means that everyone's kind of working in a silo and but the silo is also a, it's also a pipeline of like a repetitive loop that that uh he interprets a large amount of black people are going through um but to get back to the point so yeah i i don't i don't fully agree with this just because i think it yeah it assumes that there there isn't a community that is um fostering one fostering the behavior and two also, at the same time, I'm counteracting this, um, or, or working right, against this behavior, I think there, yes, there is a, um, there are elements of within the household that can actually uh, uphold, you know, doing crime for like that's that's what he's insinuating, right? Um, but I think there are also people like no one wants their son to go to prison, but it happens right i i feel like he he lost the um in, intention i i don't think in this speech he really gave thought to the fact that people sometimes don't make conscious decisions even in raising a child um i do agree with his point that I feel like he kind of said, but I don't like the way he said it, that some people should not have kids. Um, like a young person should not be having kids. Like you shouldn't be having a kid at like 16, 17. Um, Cause you're a kid yourself. Right. Um, I do agree with that point, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I like to believe that there is a community of, of people that aren't advocating for someone to go to prison. But in this um, individual's, Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah, At least in so large I, volume. I think that this line is easily the single best line he gave in the speech. I think if you're absent for like when he's 12, when he's 18, you can't be surprised that he goes for like other friend groups for like validation. You can't be surprised that he's doing other things for attention, like 
bringing a gun or doing other things for self-defense. You weren't there to teach him self-defense. And you have these people who are literally absent and they're surprised that their kids are doing something impervious. You didn't see what he does for eight to 12 hours a day. You didn't monitor him eight for 12 hours a day. You weren't there in the house. You weren't there at all. So of course he's going to like go to other groups and he's going to learn from other groups on how to be a man or how to get some of these traits, how to defend himself, how to get attention or positive ways of getting attention. And when he does it on these other groups, then you can't be shocked if he picks up things that you don't like from other groups. You weren't there. I think then there should be, which Cosby also does not do, um, there should be a, uh, there's two paths, right? There's two paths of absentee. You can be there financially, but not be there emotionally at all and vice versa. And he's talking about people that are, or I guess three groups, like you can just not be there at all. But he's talking about people that aren't there at all, like 100%. Right. I don't. I don't think and, so. Because I, I think what I think more so what he's referring to is the fact that like, um, man, we, we, when when you have these people in these inner cities, and sometimes these parents are working literally two jobs just to keep the roof over their head. They're, and the father is not present, which is what he's talking about. When we already know that literally, I think over seventy percent of 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 black women are raising their children alone, which is obviously like a, a, a slide on both men and women, the women for making the decision to choose these men and the men for abandoning their family. Both of them are in the wrong. I would say more so the man is in the wrong because he obviously has the choice to abandon his, father, his children. Um, and I doubt that the mother is thinking he's going to abandon the kid when she gets pregnant. Um, in most of the cases, although there are some. Anyway, so I, I think what he's talking about is one, like, well, if we break it down, um, one of the things he says is, uh, what, what, where is the father and why don't you know where he is, right? Because there's a lot of time where you have these completely absent fathers in, in these children's lives and like they said literally over 70%, right? And why doesn't the father show up to talk to this boy? They're talking about fatherlessness inside of the home. And we obviously see how detrimental that is. Uh, when, they're saying, when he's saying, where were you when he was two? And where, where, where were you when he was 12? I think a lot of that is because, as he uh, also mentioned, is that a lot of times these mothers aren't necessarily raising their children. A lot of times they're giving their, their children to their grandparents, and their grandparents are raising their children, and things like that. I, I think he's more talking about just those cultural factors, like the upbringing, the, the, the rearing of the children, the parenting is not there. And do you think that that's at all valid? I think it's valid, but... Um, there's still, there's still, uh, I guess with, you know, p parents who give their kids to their parents. So the grandparents in this scenario, um, there's still a community, like not, not every kid is going to grow up in this way. Right. Cause then then it would, yeah, then it would definitely be a problem. But not every kid's growing up to 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 go to prison. Not every kid is growing up with being raised by their grandparents and ending up in the uh, state that Cosby is uh, illustrating in this speech. Yeah, I don't think he was I think he's giving a lot of weight to bad situations. I don't think, because, like, if you grow up in like a perfect situation what like white family or whatever or like both parents are in the household i don't think the speech is for you i think that this part of the speech is for the people who didn't grow up in the best of circumstances and i don't think and more so i don't think every speech that makes generalizations or every speech that talks about a community has to talk about like every single individual or has to talk about like absolute i think if you're giving a speech, the goal of the speech should be to address a problem. And we all acknowledge that, like, parents and, like, parenting is a problem. Um, and but I, then I, the uh, audience, if the audience, we all agree that the audience is in AACP, I don't, how many of those types of people that the speech is supposed to target actually hearing this speech? I, well, I mean, the speech was, like, like broadcast around the world. I mean... I would imagine that most people heard the speech, and I think what he was doing was kind of pointing it out again to a largely black audience. I would still imagine that the vast majority, for example, if we look at college campuses today, 
still would find that the majority, while I would say less than just the general population, the majority of black people in those situations are growing up in still single parent households. That's just the numbers. The numbers are that that's what's you, happening. What, what, are, what are those numbers again? I'm sorry. I think, I think they said it was like something like 70% of, of black babies are born out of wedlock. And um, I, I think it was like 72%, I want to say. Something. It's the majority. Uh, I think I know you had that. those numbers. Uh, okay. Oh, well, you think it's 27%? Oh, b- born out of wedlock? Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I thought I heard you say something different. I, I'm, I apologize. Well, do you have the numbers on you by any chance of single parent households within the black community? Um, uh, not, the, not those numbers. Um, I have uh, solo parents, which would be single parents. 42% are white, 28% are black, um, and 55% uh, of cohabiting parents who are white and oh, are white and 13% are so black. So you're saying only 28% um, of black parents are, ra- are, are, are solo? Um, no, I think it's saying of solo parents of 28% are black. Like, oh, so okay, sure, sure, all sure. The okay, solo parents. sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Okay, but that's that's not the, that's not what I'm saying. I'm right, sorry. right. I'm sorry. I, I, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I, I misheard you. I'm sorry. Because if we only um, make up twelve percent so, of the population, that's still crazily disproportionate. It is. It is. And and I, I couldn't find the numbers. I was looking for the, for the numbers um, just to back up what you were saying, but I couldn't. But I I, I literally do believe you. Those numbers don't sound far fetched. Um. So. Just once again, my, my problem with the with the framing of this this discussion the, with this discussion is is like it implies that just um, now okay there is a disproportional amount of black fathers that are absent by choice, but it implies that um, m- most black fathers that are absent are absent by choice. When I I don't believe that to be true, um, from what I can find um, that tends not to be the case like not m- much more than other other races um so once again m- my problem with his framing of this speech is as if this like uh, these problems are he exaggerates some of the problems like i said and then other problems he um just leaves out part of the equation i think a more thorough it just just seemed like a, a, a like he's yelling at people like you know you better be good or 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 you, you know you're just going to continue to fail when we know that that like when you're just yelling at somebody that that's not that doesn't tend to, to just work you have to actually teach them something you actually have, have to actually provide them solutions um and if it like if we just go off this one speech that's one thing but his whole pattern his whole tour he went on after that was just the same speech of just get your shit together, get your shit together. You better, got to do better. You got to do better. And it just seemed like there's, there's no solutions provided um, include. And also, you know, add to that, the fact that he's framing this in a way that just seems like he's just like, just saying it's all every single black poor person. It's your fault. And is you know, just do better. And if you don't do better, or if you can't just do better, it's your fault, basically. When, like I said, that, that that's just not, that doesn't tend to be the case. I had a few things to, to uh, talk about. All right. So I briefly read a Vox article. <laughs> you guys can attack Vox if you want, but, um, I think that the stat of, of black kids being born in like a, like seventy percent of uh, single mother homes, I, I don't know if that takes into account of like cohabiting parents that simply aren't married. Like I know this is gonna be anecdotal. I personally know a lot of parents that are around my age, like a lot of dads, right, that live with their baby moms but just don't aren't married to them. Um and I, I feel like that might be a little bit more common. I'm one of them. Then, yeah, see, I, I it's, just, it's a, personally, I live with my baby mom. I'm not married to her. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think you're extremely rare. Like I, I don't think so. Um, it, it seems as though about like sixty percent of black fathers actually live with their kids or are around their kids on like on a va- on a relatively common basis. It's just that like, um, how how these stats get broken down is based off of marriage. Um, which I guess is kind of faulty. It's hard to get data for like people inside of their homes and how, how they live their lives within closed doors of their home. Um, but I wanted to address S, uh, STV 
STV Phillies point. Um, like, I feel like sometimes, like, there there are systemic things that we can address. There are also personal things we can address. You probably agree with me on this. We're like, say, like, if you have, like, a friend that's, like, super poor. Um, yeah, there's a lot of systemic shit that probably happened to them. But you can still give them, like, personal prescription um, uh, advice, criticisms, things like that. Um, that applied directly to them. I think that's what Cosby was doing. Um, sure, he did not speak on systemic things, like things that are like due to environmental factors or to like systemic racism, things like that. But he can still address things like, okay, well, what what can you do today personally within your environment to change things? And I think that's part of Cosby's Cosby's point. Um, maybe not. It might not have been said in the best best way, uh, more most holistic way. But I think that's like the point that he was giving. Oh, look, really quick. Here's my I looked it up. OK, and it seems like um, I, I just linked it in my stream and I'll link it to you guys um, out of the group chat. I mean, it seems like 43 uh, percent of 43.9 percent of black children of, ch- of black, yeah, black children are raised in a home with their mom only. Uh, 8.1 percent are with cohabiting parents. 3.9 percent are with the dad only and 7.5 percent are with no parents. Uh, so what are the racial, what are the makeups of the other races? If that's um, there? They're, they're, they're all there in the same, in the same thing. Just click it. Um, for, for, for white people, 74% of them are married. 7% are, um, cohabiting. So married and cohabiting parent make, make up 81% of white people. Married and, co- married and cohabiting parents make up 44.1% for black people. Married and cohabiting parents make up 70, what is this, uh, 71.1% for uh, Hispanics. And they make up 87, no, 88% even for Asian people. Um, so this issue, the non, non-cohabiting, non-married, non-double parents, um, makes up uh, literally over half of all black children being raised today. So then I think gotcha. there there is a I I it, it, it saddens me to need to look up these numbers because I thought we were all aware of this kind of thing like but but regardless it so the point that he's me- talking about with the uh, just to be clear mom only outnumbered uh it it it, it out it outnumbered married by a lot um uh, and then it barely, barely is lower than cohabiting and married. Um, I think the difference is uh, 0.2%. They're almost identical. Um, no, that can't be. Yes, it is. 44.1. Now, what, what, now so, so, so what would your best guess as the root of that problem is? Why are black people getting married less than white people? Economics. Okay. But, but there's Bill a, Cosby is saying it's on. cultural, economics and culture. So let me let me break Thank that down you. really quick. Thank, that's my whole point. Come it's, on, that's if so you don't, much don't more than he's just making. Don't it. act like that hasn't been already established. I already said that multiple times. I, I'm not going to do it. Everyone else already okay. gets it. I fine. So if, listen, if, so if, listen, if it's new for so, you, that's fine. To, um, so to Taj's point, to Taj's point, I live like in 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 between two uh, like like gang war and projects. I live in like the. And amongst the um, the the very lower classes of Philadelphia society at the moment, um, like like my neighborhood. So um, these people that he's talking to and that he's talking about, um, I I literally see uh, this this culture that you're talking about, fanatic. This nasty, like filthy, like decayed uh, culture of of of. Well, in my cities, particularly, uh, it's just a lot of gang violence and um killing and violence and 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 crime um i i don't come from that i'm not a part of that um on my youtube channel i talk a lot about that however i do also have a chance to speak with people within within the culture and to the and to taj's point to them um i don't i don't know if like wagging my finger do better it is i mean obviously that is my message is going to be to do better but like i don't think like um, I think I would I would try to offer them more solutions to their problem than just saying like you know um, you, you know it's fucked up what you're doing and what what, the, what you just did and what you did last week that's you know I, I think 
the only thing I could offer them, um, and I think this has to be on a broader a broader level of how we be, approach these things, are solutions to their problems. Okay, so what's your main reason for joining the gang? Um, your economic reasons, or your father wasn't around, or or what? We have to get to the root to the of these individual problems, and a lot of a lot of a lot of the things that Bill Cosby talks about is what is the reality of the situation is that these people do come from households without out without fathers without um with with mothers who uh like really are kind of indifferent to their uh activities uh where they're at and who they're hanging out with and um and and he's right kids should be more afraid more afraid to embarrass their family than to get in trouble like there are things in there that i, I can agree with him on it's just kind of uh, like I said, it just doesn't it, it doesn't seem to provide enough solutions uh, for me. I don't think the entire Personal. purpose of this thing was to provide solutions. Uh, I think what his goal was, and I think one of the first steps to fixing a problem is admitting there is a problem. And I honestly, I didn't hear this kind of thing, the cultural thing being discussed. I feel like on the heels of the civil rights movement, that sort of like the, the systemic oppression por portion of the conversation purely dominated all discussions regarding racial disparities. And I think that there needed to be someone to speak up about some of the cultural choices and some of the cultural norms that have been created. Now, I am willing to admit very readily that some of these cultural norms have been created by systemic oppression. For instance, the idea that you would actually start to normalize the culture of fatherlessness within the home can be traced back to a time when they started saying, we'll provide you with um, AFDC and other sort forms of government assistance for needy families, and uh, w w but in order to get this or Section Eight or any of the other assistance, you can't have a, a man in the home, and so then of course this causes men to make the decision that I will not be there like for my children so that they can eat. It's hard for me to find a job. I'm not able to provide for them. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to be absent. And there were crackdowns because some people would say, okay, fine, we'll just put on paper that I'm not there and I'll live there. And then they were cracking down on those people and saying, if we find out that you're not and we're doing raids and figuring it out, then now you and your family are cut off. And now you don't have the job, you don't have the means to feed them, and there's no government assistance available, right? So I understand where that would start to create a cultural norm because now children raised, raised without a father in the home think it might be okay to be raised without a father in the home. And all of the other problems that are associated with fatherlessness in the home now start to become part of the upbringing and rearing of this child, of this child, not just a child of a community, because these were these were commu community problems widespread in the black community. So then I get where that culture happens. However, it's still a choice. I never wanted to have kids out of wedlock. So my pullout game was either going to have to be ridiculous or I was going to have to wear condoms on a regular basis or I was going to have to be abstinent or plan B was going to be my best friend. But I was going to make that choice regardless. I knew I could have had children out of wedlock. I've had that opportunity, but I've always decided against it culturally. My mother had seven children, all with my father. All of us got same mom, same dad, and she had all those seven children after marriage. And I think that is a culture that was instilled. It was like heavily frowned upon. And so I made that decision. Now, that doesn't mean everybody's going to make that decision, but you can instill those values. And I think that those values are now absent where the stigma, which is what he talks about in this thing, the stigma associated with single parenting is no longer there within the black community. That's actually disappearing worldwide, I mean countrywide, for all races, although more so, more heavily within the black community than any other communities. And I think the reason for that destigmatization is because of the normalization brought on by the systemic oppression. And so, um, I, 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 again, I don't think that, yeah, I just, so I think the substance of what he's saying there about the fatherlessness and how that creates the problem, and we can obviously trace like super duper higher prison rates for people in single parent households, uh, with, with single mom households, as opposed to uh, married married couples households. So this is part of the problem. There's significantly higher prison rates. I think they were saying something like 50% of inmates are from the foster care system or something stupid, or 50% of foster care kids end up being like within, uh, like involved with the, in the criminal justice system. Um, so it, these things about having these parents involved, I think that's just a salient point. I, I, I don't think that there's any, there's any strong arguments there. I don't think that he was trying to sum up the entirety of the issue to only parenting. And I feel like that's the most uncharitable way. I was hoping we could have a conversation where we're looking at what he's saying, looking for the substance as opposed to 
straw manning it to say that this is what he's saying is literally the whole of the prop whatever when we see other conversation where he's been literally ra ra railing against systemic oppression so we know that he recognizes systemic oppression is real we know that he recognizes that it has an impact but he also is right now focusing specifically on culture so we can address the statements he's making on culture without trying to pretend that he's unaware or completely dismissing all other elements in this specific individual conversation uh, i don't i don't agree that uh he uh he addresses uh systemic oppression in a, in, a, in a way that that you're saying he has mentioned it before uh when his son was killed um i i think his wife um like went on a whole campaign about um systemic oppression and um i forget the exact details around that but um Cosby's whole image, uh, his whole life has been to kind of shun these, um, these ideas of um, that, you know, there is there, that racism is still a big issue. He, uh, he always wanted to try to portray um, the way he the way that black people needed to be portrayed on the TV on TV and, and culture is the way that it was that he was portrayed on uh, the Cosby show and he always went about it in a very um kind of like um high and mighty um attitude now he did he did give money back to some colleges and stuff but beyond that like his attitude especially during the time around this pound cake speech was one of um don't you know it's it was really like this is this speech and his attitude every everything after this that like i said the tour he went on uh, about these about uh these issues that he brought up in his speech um it, it it wasn't one of um like you know kind of rounding the problem out like i said it it, it, it i'm not trying to mischaracterize it's fine so anyways, what he was saying i got you maybe we just we can agree to disagree on that point about the substance of the things that he's actually state stating do you do you let's get into some more of that so, are there any so other... uh, specifically about the parenting thing and i i do give him credit he 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 kind of um motion to religion as as some of the um the answers to some of these problems um he, he vaguely he he started talking about um like muslims um and the muslim brotherhood and, and the way that the way that communities reacted to to them um and that he was saying that the church christians needed to be more like that and the church needed to be more involved um I can get behind that. I'm not a very religious person myself, but I, in terms of those cultural issues that you just spoke of, in terms of of, of marriage and and black people not getting married as much as they should, and uh, being a single parent that that needs to be more uh, ostracized within our community, um, or being a parent out of wedlock, like I, I should say, not not a single parent, a parent out of wedlock. Um, yeah, um, I, I agree, and and I'm thinking of solutions, and I, I you know, religion and and kind of uh, more morally, the, we have having to moralize these things um, is the only solution I can think of. Hmm. Let's leave Tosh. Anything? Um, I don't. I don't know. I just don't like the uh, every single speech has to be hyper nuanced and address 36 axes of whatever. I think it was like really clear um, what he was saying. He was saying black parent parenting is a problem. Um, I don't, you know, I don't care for the 36 axis of whatever nuanced thing we can have and, you know, whatever implication. I just think those are that's just too much. If I'm doing a speech, if I'm writing a speech for the NAACP, I don't want to have to qualify my statement 72 different times. Uh, I want to say what I want to say, and I want a message. And I think the message that Bill Cosby got across was pretty clear. Okay, so let's deal with um, a little, little, little bit more of that message. Um, he says I'm there's a point. To, I'm trying to di oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Do you have, do you have some oh, more? Oh, no, I, sorry about questions? that. I'm, I'm trying to dive into like how this data was collected by Josh Levs. The guy who said that that about sixty percent of black families no, 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 actually no, 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 do live no, no. together. Can we can um, we can 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 we not? Because this isn't a this isn't a black single parent debate. That was the point okay. that he was making, and we're talking about the speech. And I would like us to get into the substance okay. of the speech. And it feels like 
literally every single point has been beleaguered because we're trying to debate individual statements and arguing about whether it's properly qualified and all of this this is a very long not not very long it's not it's maybe about what like 10 paragraph 15 paragraphs and we've probably only touched on two it's so beleaguered I don't, unnecessarily. I don't agree with him and you're not letting me disagree with him i don't okay. know what to say yeah I got okay you. we I'm... have problems in the black community yes Yes, we do. Sure. I'm not letting you disagree with him. Uh, anyway, so John, that's what I would like us to focus more on, on on this thing. Can we So is there any other parts of the speech that we have that we can get into the substance of outside of trying to debate on whether or not it's perfectly accurate that there's exactly 61% of people that are not born in like come on, man. Good god. I'm frustrated. Okay. I actually did, think. Did oh, no. his internet cut out, or did, did he rage quit? Who? Oh, I think Philly just dropped, but I think he might. He he'll come back. Um, but I I actually do want to quickly touch on um his point about being from Africa. Like we're not Africans. Did anyone else find that like? I I get where it was coming from because again it was the sense of community but I guess I just didn't understand the connect and also no, I don't understand that part at all <laughs> Yeah and, and cuts leave you oh my gosh you said something that kind of uh I wanted to go into too I can't remember what it was um, uh, I talked about the nuance of the speech and how I don't want to, every speech to be hyper nuanced. Um, about oh, how yeah, yeah, I think, but I think if this speech is supposed to um, connect with the audience that it's targeted for, then it means that you do have to say it a bunch of different ways for that to connect to them, right? Like you do have to keep harping on the same point but say frame it in a different way so that it changes someone's behavior because that's the point right i just don't think i don't think this changed any behavior i'm not sure if the speech was to like change behavior he didn't really give solutions i think the but speech why? was why yeah, yeah, no, it's not about, I'm not saying solutions, I'm saying, like, he's, like, galvanizing people, right, to, to change, to, to pick up your pants, and to pay attention to your kid, and make sure that they do the right thing, and X, Y, and Z, right? Right. But, like, what are the other, I guess I'm trying to say, like, what are the other things that you see that he did? That was that. I mean, I think I'm not like super sure about the question, but I think he was like addressing single parenthood and addressing the consequences of that, like kids getting guns, uh, kids going to jail, et cetera. What, what, like, okay. okay. Uh, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I agree with the speech overall. I think parenthood is a huge problem. I think culture. Uh, needs to shift. I think we can acknowledge 56 historical difficulties, but at the end of the day, it's a matter of individual responsibility. Um, and like, this is a problem unique to blackness. It's unique to the African American culture, and these problems need to be solved by us. If we're going to have these problems, we have to have um, unique solutions to these problems. Um, but yeah, and I, I agree with the substance of the speech. Like it's all derivative for culture and parenthood is the single like best predictor for like everything. In life. It like predicts like criminality, it predicts like income. It's like the single best predictor for everything. So that is the huge, huge that we should fix. I think that's absolutely true. And I think that's kind of what he was getting at. Because for me, like, I, I recognize, like, obviously I've been complaining about and, and, and preaching about freaking reparations for God knows how long. But there does come a point where you eventually say to yourself, 
these white folks are racist. They're not going to give us that. So we got to just figure this out on our own. We can't keep waiting for them to do that, right? Like, we just got to eventually say, what can we do right now to fix these problems that we have ourselves, that, that the culture has, that it's encountering? And I think, I think when you start looking at it, and I totally agree with what Cusleaf is saying here, parenting is probably the single largest influencer. Now, there are other things that will influence, but they're not as big. Uh, I mean, but, the, but, but I think even all of those things can be overcame with parenting. And I think like the idea that you would start admonishing parents um, in, in a situation where you recognize like there's been like almost this cultural apathy and this benign neglect that has been like embodied by um, our government, right? Th then it's like, yo, if benign neglect is going to be the thing and they truly believe they've done enough, they're not going to do more. And if they're not going to do more, we got to figure out what we're going to do. We can't just sit here and crumble beneath the system and say it's done. It's it's woe is me. We got to figure out what we can do. And I think one of the biggest changes right now, not to tell, tell me any person in this panel that disagrees with me. If we were to hyper stigmatize so as to eradicate single parenting within the black community, do you not think that the that, that our trajectory would dramatically change? I guess. Yeah, so. yeah that's just a universal statement. What um, changes are we seeing? I guess is my question. What changes? You would see higher dropout rate, higher college attendance, higher employment, less incarceration, less drug usage, less gang participation. Um, less criminality. You would just see all of those things with, with the single parent households. Those are all things that we know for a fact, quantifiably, are higher, higher, more highly associated with um, these outcomes. We know this to be true, right? I don't. Wait. Actually, like, I'm okay, so let's go through each one individually. But... Hold, let, let me just double check really quick individually. Did you not know that, like, do, do you not, do you, did you not know that, like, single parent households have significantly higher like um, the children from single parent households have significantly higher likelihood of going to prison? No. Okay, did you not know that single parent households had higher dropout rates than their like married counterparts? That I did know. Okay, did you not know that gang participation that was higher among single parent households as opposed to married couples? No. Okay, yeah, I, I guess, okay. I guess we just gotta do some research on these subjects. Um. Yeah, all of these numbers can, can be counted. We, we know this stuff to be true. We should. And I think that's what, that's what we're talking about. Th those are the things that we could probably see like dramatically change. And so whereas like, it, it's crazy to me because like, I think one of the biggest, uh, I guess, complaints to this, this conversation so far has been that, well, he's not coming up with prescriptions or he's not like suggesting things to do. Like he's not telling people what, you know, he's, he's not coming up with, yeah, prescriptions for how to fix the situation, but he is. The largest prescription to fixing these problems is parenting. That's what the entire subject of this whole thing is about. It's parenting and education. Look, look at this line right here. Black basketball players, multimillionaires can't write a paragraph. Football players, multimillionaires can't read. Yes, multimillionaires. Well, Brown versus Board of Education, uh, Board of Education, where are we today? It's there. They paved the way. What did we do with it? The white man, he's laughing. Gotta be laughing. 50% dropout, rest of them in prison. So here, it's like, we need, we Let gotta actually. explain act it, though. What? Because you still have, like, to, like, at a professional, like, that point, actually, I don't think that's his strongest point to what you were saying. I I'm not saying it's the strongest. Points. It's not, but I'm saying what he's pointing out here, that the education is abysmal still. The highest but paid athlete I in the hear... world is Mayweather, and he's literally, he can't read. I mean, he does have dyslexia, but, like, he can't read. Dyslexia was one of the things yeah. that Bill Cosby talked about inside of and, and, and his show with his son, Theo. He was dyslexic. Um, like, And I hear that, but it's saying that, like, you still have to have some amount. Of, I don't know for boxing. I don't fucking know. But for, like, a football player, NBA player, like, you still have to, like, go to a D1 or, like, go to a, a good school or good schools in order to get to that level. 
but you know that most of the time they get there on full ride scholarships and then these people literally start scrubbing their grades in order to make sure that they continue to generate all those millions of dollars for the school of which the players are receiving none of it right like you know that like yeah it's, so it's, then it's but then forever. parenting isn't in that case is what i'm trying to say in that case parenting isn't the problem it's education is the problem you think that a heavily involved parent and in, on their child's education wouldn't recognize that their child is not reading and therefore purchase hooked if they're on playing sports or things or going professional things. no they don't care about that do they're not going to care about that do you think if i was like i'm a musician I'm a musician and I have like one of the most amazing ears of any person I've ever met in my entire life. You have being to read 100% music for real. That. I don't read music. I play exclusively by ear. Never have I ever learned to read music. So Why? Cuz that's just the way that God gave me the gift. Now, do you think that my mother was comfortable with that gift and saying therefore I didn't know to read? Or do you think that read she was Read music or read Read, well, read like school education. Read. Like I'm 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 making an analogy. Just because I have this gift and this gift is like literally it's how I make my living, it's how I make my money. That doesn't mean that now all of a sudden my mom's not going to be interested in my education. A good parent, whether or not their child is athletically inclined or not, is still going to ensure that their child is doing good educationally. Right? Yeah, that's a good parent. That's I what we're talking like about. Being here. a good parent is exclusive. But that's but that's what we're talking people. about here. No, we're we're not. I'm not saying good or bad parents is exclusive to black people. What we're talking about here is the absence of good parenting in every situation where you have a basketball player that's a millionaire and unable to read or can't write a paragraph, or a football player. In any of these situations, that is indicative of poor parenting because the only way outside of some like crazy disability, like some really absurd dyslexia or mental retardation or things like that. A good parent is still going to insist that their child's education is paramount, right? Agree, but that's not a single parent. A well, good parent can be a single parent. Yes, and even in those cases, then they should be focusing on these. So then what we want, once again, this problem that he's talking about with these basketball players and so on and so forth that are unable to read and whatever, these people who are like highly talented but not able to do these things, I think the point that he's still referring to is parenting. Brown versus Board of Education and parent involvement in their education is what's leading to this problem. That's what he's talking about. Yeah, but I feel like a second ago, or what I heard a second ago, was that you were you were criticizing single parent households. That too, not good parent. Well, because okay, single, so okay, but, but they're, so they're, they're not all, synonymous. They're, no, they're That's not, all, okay. and they're all they're all combined. You can have the, the most amazing good parent, but a good, a, a great single parent still has some sort of deficits that they're going to have to whatever. Oh, they still have sure. a They still have a limitation on resources. How do you work and provide a full time, work a full time job and still be involved in all the p teacher parent meetings and making sure that you're there when your kid gets off of school and they're not being raised by a daycare, like making sure you're helping your kid with all of their homework, and, like uh, cooking three meal or two meals at least or even three meals sometimes for the kids. Like all of these things are greatly impacted by single parenthood again at the bottom at the, at the end of the day parenting is really what matters and that's what he's rallying against i agree parenting does matter so then do you think that there's so then there's some there is some merit to the statement when he's talking about these basketball players multimillionaires that can't write a paragraph or football players multimillionaires can't read like it's saying like hey yeah there's merit yeah yes there's merit but oh. it's, it's not it's not absolute okay Look, here's the very next sentence so that we can be clear that he's talking about it. So where he says the, the white man, he's laughing, got to be laughing, 50% dropout, rest of them in prison. You got to tell me that if there was parenting, help me, if there was parenting, he would have picked up the Coca-Cola bo Coca bottle and walked out with it to get shot in the back of the head. So as soon as he makes that line, he goes right back to the parents. Can you repeat that? Where oh. was that again? It's um if you just control a fifty percent dropout, it's or, or basketball players. It's the very next paragraph. He said, "You got to tell me if there was parenting. If there was parenting, he would have picked up the coca. He he wouldn't have picked up the Coca Cola bottle and walked out with it to get shot in the back of the head. He wouldn't have. Not if he loved his parents, and not if they were parenting. Not if the father would come home. Not if that boy had had hadn't dropped that sperm cell off in that girl and had said no. And, 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 and um inside of the girl, and the girl had said no. You have to come back here and be the father's child. Not I don't have to." 
There, therefore, you have oh, the pallop of these okay. sweet, beautiful things born by nature, raised by no one. Give them, give whatever. It's all of this whole thing. The primary thing is parents and education. The end of it, the very last statement. So tell your friend, let's try to do something. Let's try to make Jesus smile. Let's start parenting. Thank you. Thank you. The last sentence is let's start parenting. The whole focus is on parenting. Now, does he, is he saying that like none of these other factors exist? Of course not. But clearly that, that, that's, that is important, right? A good parent, of course, good parenting is, is paramount. But I, I don't think that, yes, this is his point, but this is the point that I don't agree with, that you can't be a good parent. In a in uh or yeah I don't I don't think that being a single parent means you can't be a good parent. I but you're like inherently that's... at a deficit. Would you agree with that? Yes, if you are one person raising one child or two children, yes. If you are one person and you have some help, I don't think so. Okay, so then it's not. It, we probably don't have to go into the merits of what it means to be good here, right? We're not going to go into all yeah, those qualifications. No. But I think the idea is that yes, there is a problem with parents. I don't know if he ever said you can't be a good parent as a single parent, but what he was definitely saying is that the problem of single parent, which has all of these outcomes that we can tra trace and quantify, are present heavily and more so in the black community, and these problems need to be addressed. And I, I, I mean. There's a there's another part something I think he literally used the word stigma. Yeah, that was earlier on, I think. Yeah, maybe. I thought I really thought I, thought I, I read too. it myself, but maybe it's a typo or something, so it's not finding it. Um, man, this is this is a a heavy one. Uh. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, we, you know, we're kind of getting close to the wrap up stage. Anybody have any other like major points they want to address? Minor points or closing thoughts or any of it? Oh, there was something else. He was talking. He was talking about um. Uh, what was the down south thing? Like he said something about like. Mm. Mm -hmm. A kid going down south, or a girl going down south, and like giving the mother the child. Yeah. Um. So there, was, you know. Yeah. Well, obviously, you, you, we we obviously know about the the great migration, and again, not every statement is going to be entirely qualified, but we understand that there has been the great migration right, that happened it was the largest like movement of people within the country from one area to the other, which was black people from the south elsewhere. And so then a lot of times the, some people moved and relocated, whereas the other people like still stayed in the South. And so in those cases, when you had a young girl who was pregnant in order to avoid that stigma, they would run away to the South. And then the mom would go down to the South to get the child, get her kid. And at that point, then when the, the, the baby was born, the mother raised the baby as her own child. Right. And so that's why he's saying the mother had the baby in two weeks. We are not parenting. Oh, okay. My uh, mom would tell me about that. That uh, happened during like the sixties and seventies a bunch. Yes. Cause like teen pregnancy was like higher back then. Um, when our parents were Oh yeah, teenagers. it's it's been declining dramatically. Uh, ironically, it's really it's like the lowest I think it's ever been in this country right now. It's crazy. Um but yeah, like so so that was happening. And so then it's like, yeah, you would just have a sibling that was really your kid. Um kids were being raised with the sisters that were really their mothers. Never being told. Britney Spears did that in one of her movies. I forget what it was called. Um, but in any case, yeah, like that's that was the thing that he was talking about. And again, that comes down to parenting. Look, re read the sentence where he's talking about that. So, but he's saying like, he's saying that's that's bad. Oh, yes. Do you know? No, he's, he's saying that like there's like a huge stigma for like for broken homes. Like, or, or at least there was back when he was younger. Um, so he's like doing the old man reminiscing with like a rose tinted lenses, I guess. 
okay. of like the past. Where he's like, hey, this stigma's good. Um, that's what he's saying. Yeah, let's read that sentence really quick. Or I mean that little section. He says, you're going to embarrass your mother. You're going to embarrass your family. If you knock that girl up, you're going to have to run away because it's going to be too embarrassing for your family. In the old days, a girl getting pregnant had to go down south and then her mother would go down to get her. But the mother had the baby. I said the mother had the baby. The girl didn't have the baby. The mother had the baby in two weeks. We are not parenting. I mean, that's that really is it in a nutshell. It it really just boils down to the idea that like, I mean, and it sucks. Um, like circumstances I mean, in life happen. Would this couldn't this be? Go ahead. Yeah, couldn't this be in a way be like? Couldn't this be in a way like in a counter in a roundabout way just kind of be like evidence of like Cosby's statements not working? Um, where you just admitted that like teen pregnancy was higher back then when there was more sexual shame and stigma to things like that. Um, I think that there's good, good, like, um, good points had that he said with like, if, Hey, like if you knock a girl up and if you're like, you're not there, that's like a shame on you and your family. I understand that part, but like this, this stuff still happened. People still ended up blinking each other. Um, so I don't know. I think, I think it needs to be like more roundabout besides just like, um, stigmatizing, um fatherless homes in the black community I'm like sorry. maybe we should build like communities that are that kind of as blm would say <laughs> uh well how do they say it? dismantle the requirement for a nuclear family um uh, maybe that'd be like more equitable for us uh no. long term in the united states no no, no in no I ways see. number one number one like we can't sit here and say that his words aren't working because of the fact that he didn't completely eradicate something with a speech that's crazy number one Number two, it wasn't yeah, like it was. Less oh, I, I, no, no, number, I, I mean, there was more I think it's more about the change, not no. not his speech. He wasn't taught. He wasn't. Everything. He wasn't speaking about. He wasn't speaking about teen pregnancy as a positive thing, even in this scenario. Hmm. He he was talking about the fact that like this whole this whole paragraph was talking about how these things are embarrassments to your family, and how you shouldn't you wouldn't want to get your you're going to embarrass your family. In other words, look where he says. Uh, you're going to embarrass your mother. You're going to embarrass if you knock that girl up. You're going to have to run away because it's going to be too embarrassing for your family. So, like, he was still saying these things were terrible. It's like, in other words, he's saying that these are negative things that are happening, right? He was never. And I think the, the reason that teen pregnancy, I that. um, I think the reason that teen pregnancy is lower nowadays. I don't think it has anything to do with the stigma. Um, I think it has you know, to do with like access to abortion um, and like people are just generally less um, sexually desirable. Um, men are having sex less um, than they were back in the day. People are seeing each other less. Um, I think these are the things. So yeah, combine that with like a stigma of you shouldn't be single parent um, or like you shouldn't have babies out of wedlock. Um, I think it could dramatically drive down pregnancy rates. Yeah. Um, man, I think, uh, oh gosh, gosh, when are we going to have a conversation on this BLM thing? We gotta, we gotta, we gotta do that. Cause that's, that's a whole separate conversation. In and I'm open to having the convo. I like, I don't think they said anything wrong in particular during their, during their mission statement. Oh, they did. Like I'm, I'm trying to think of one wrong thing they said. I can't think. Oh, of Oh, most of it. I think when you start talking about for putting at the forefront something that's intersectional and a hyper minority of an of a group, it becomes problematic. But that's this is not the reform for that discussion. What we'll have to do is we can go ahead and mm. schedule that another time, and we will gladly get into it because I do happen to have yeah. that thing bookmarked. So yeah, we can get into their original mission statement. It was complete trash. Um, this conversation was painful and frustrating, but I'm still glad that it happened. I love each and one of you, each and every one of you guys for being present. Um, I think this speech really was crazily substantive to me. And it seems like um, very often when trying to engage with things, um, I feel like often we'll be, get into straw men or we'll try to paint the intentions of the individual as something incredibly like malformed, therefore to discredit the statements being made despite the merit or accuracy of those things. And I think that happened a lot in this conversation. And I think there's so much substance here. And I feel like we got really bogged down on like little trivial 
minutia as opposed to discussing statements that he was actually saying. Um, and I really wish maybe I had like a pre-production conversation to kind of help to, to kind of get across what the goal was to discuss here. Um, I wish we could have had a charitable interpretation and therefore really got into this. Um, I'm linking the pound cake speech. Um, and I'll put that in the uh, comment section of and that way we can uh, anybody that wants to revisit it on some merits. I'm more than willing to have a conversation one on one or revisit this on a panel if anybody feel, feels particularly inclined. Mm -hmm.